As a former middle school band director and someone who still teaches woodwind methods courses at my university, the most common challenge I've seen young players have on clarinet when they're starting out is learning to cross the break. Crossing the break on the clarinet is where we go from third line B flat, fingered like this, the top of the pipe, to long B natural third line with everything down. So we're going not only from an open pipe note to a closed pipe note and all the issues with air that that brings, but we're also trying to get all of the fingers down from off of the A key and down to the entire instrument. So that's really tricky for young players. So to me, the very most important thing to teach is proper hand position to begin with, because without that, crossing the break is not gonna be successful. So what does that mean? I'll start first of all with the right hand. And I like to first of all, place the fingers before I place the thumb, so we get the thumb in the proper position. So we wanna make sure we're using the pads of the fingers placed into the rings of the clarinet. And you wanna make sure you don't see the rings, but that the fingers are not holding over the tone holes because otherwise they're gonna leak in back of the tone hole. And we don't want the fingers to go tips down. So if you're seeing rings with your young players, they're probably squeezing and playing tips down. So think flat and fat into the tone holes with your pinky resting on the low F key. Once I've got those fingers set, then I have students place the thumb underneath the thumb rest where it naturally goes. And I'm gonna place it and it's gonna land somewhere between the thumbnail and the knuckle. It depends on the student, but we want it to have that place where the hands are in good position, not the thumb driving the hand position. Many students will many times go too far down with the thumb rest so that their fingers are having to, to look like this, like a claw kind of, or they come back too far and we end up with flat fingers. And so all of those things impede their progress. With the top hand, I'm gonna take the index finger and wrap it around the A flat and A key. These fingers arch down and the pinky rests on that B key. That's important, those pinkies act as anchors to keep hands in position. So I tell students to pretend there's a little magnet there keeping them close by. The thumb is the next important thing as we look at crossing the break because the first notes that we learn in beginning band books typically have the clarinet playing not using the register key. So they're just playing the notes down here. So unless we watch carefully and walk behind them to check, they develop the muscle memory to keep the thumb too low so that when we then ask them to cross the break, they end up having to try to leap up to the register key, which ends up causing them to squeak because they're gonna leak air out of the F tone hole and back. So you wanna walk behind and make sure that that thumb is at a one o'clock angle, and the tip of the thumb is always, always in contact with the bottom of that register key. Once that happens, you've got good hand position, and then you're ready to try to start crossing the break. So I like to get them comfortable, first of all, with being able to just press the register key and get comfortable with that motion. So I have them start on a nice, comfortable low F, and then just pop the register key. And I typically will do that first. I don't want them to be aware of it because I want them to realize they can do it. Because if you tell them they're gonna do it, they tense up. And tension is the death wish for, for crossing the brakes. So we wanna to try to stay really relaxed. So playing that low F and popping the register key. <laughs> Once they know they can do that, super simple. Then they're able, if they can keep that relaxed hand position, to go to the next step, which is actually crossing the break, going G, A, and B natural, all right? Now, here's where I, I do something that, to me, is crucial in teaching the break well, and that's teaching students resonance fingerings from the very beginning. And again, everybody's gonna have their own fingerings they like to use. Use what works for you, just use something. I'm gonna show you a fingering that works really well for me, for every clarinet that I've ever played. And I'm gonna show you just the one that works for A and B flat, all right? And to that A or B flat, I'm gonna add two, three, two, three, and the C key. And now, if you'll notice, instead of having to go from A to B, which students will typically lift their fingers way up and come down, now I'm doing that. So fingers are in position and everything is nice and clean, hopefully. So you get this. Instead of. Where students will grab the keys. So not only do the throat tones sound better and match the notes around them better, and the resistance is more similar, but we get a more even sound crossing the break. So you want to incorporate those into your scales and everything else they're doing, and you'll have a much better crossing of the break experience.